In this video, I will be sharing 5 things that are most likely to become the new standard in web development in the following 5 years. And obviously, I would like you and of course myself to be prepared for those trends in order to stay worthy on the job market. It's not a secret that as developers one of our main duties is keeping up with trends and constantly learning, because our field is extraordinarily fast paced. Imagine we go 5 years into the past and I tell you that TypeScript is now considered the industry standard when writing JavaScript. And Facebook is rebranding itself into a VR company. You would have called me crazy, right? What I'm trying to say is that the tech field is shaping itself into different forums, creating those trends and so does one of its components, the web. But enough talking, here's the first trend on the list. WebAssembly Jake Archibald and other web evangelists from Google used to push service workers into the industry. Look what happened now! Six years later and they're widely adopted. I'm not sure if you're watching Google conferences such as I.O. or Chrome Dev Summit, but WebAssembly is really being pushed at the moment. You can probably guess where I'm going with this. The main selling points of WebAssembly are its speed and flexibility. It lets you write code on the web in a language other than JavaScript, which means if you pick a low-level language such as C or C++, which is close to the iron, you can heavily optimize it and get a 20x gain in performance. Figma in the browser is built completely on WebAssembly, which reduced their loading time of the graphical app three times. At eBay, they re-implemented their barcode scanner for browsers in WebAssembly, which eventually resulted in a change from 1 FPS to 50 FPS during scanning, which is a 50x improvement. As they are saying, it wasn't easy at all, but eventually it worked out pretty well. And of course the legendary Doom 3 game engine, whereby rewriting the game for browsers from PureJS to C++ on WebAssembly, they managed to boost the performance again three times. By all of this, WebAssembly kind of already marks the extinction of desktop-only apps. From VR games to apps with heavy data usage to photo and video editors, they can all be run in the web browser now. And yeah, Rust, C and C++ are probably the best languages to brush up on if you intend getting into WebAssembly just like me. But more on that in future videos. Blockchain. This is not a Grand Stefan or Meet Kevin channel and this point is not about Dogecoins and Shiba Inus. Web 3.0, which is supposed to be built on top of blockchain, is already a thing and it's coming faster than any of us has expected. In other words, blockchain-based social networks, transactions and businesses will grow and thrive in the coming years. Twitter, Google, Meta will slowly but surely get into this field as well. What this means for us developers is that we need to be prepared for this change and brush up on our blockchain skills. I personally plan to learn Solidity, which is an object-oriented programming language for creating smart contracts, and I will try to learn building web applications on top of them. Blockchain developers are in huge demand at the moment, and are paid the highest compared to other disciplines. We're talking about an average of 145,000 US dollars here. There are already a number of cool tutorials on this topic, and I will leave a link to one of the best ones from Cree Code Camp in the description. Automation. As GitHub Copilot already creeps in and makes developers obsolete by writing all the code for you, there are still a lot of things that need to be automated. The same machine learning models that power the GitHub Copilot can be used to automate many other things on the web. Did you know that Netflix rotates thumbnails of its movies and series based on your overall preferences? I bet your Stranger Things thumbnail does not look like mine. As they explain in their tech blog, their AI picks a certain thumbnail for you, so that you're most likely to click on it. Basically, if you're into horror movies, then you're most likely gonna see one of these. On the other hand, if you're into teenager movies, then you're most likely to see one of these, featuring the actual teenagers. Now imagine writing all of this code yourself, this would have been just a bunch of if statements. Instead, Netflix utilizes AI and so does every other major company. Which means we as developers again need to be aligned with those trends. Get an overall picture of how object detection, text classification, recommendation is done by deep learning. I will leave a link to Stanford's amazing course on deep learning. But promise, you're gonna check it out because I'm sure you will love it. Especially if you already have some Python experience. Go ahead and dive deep into it, even if it means that you need to pick up Python first. It won't be hard if you know JavaScript already. AI is on the web and most of the things you're seeing are already being automated. Minimalism. 
A perfect example of minimalism in our day and age is Google search. An empty page free of anything extra that can distract you and lets you focus on its core, the search input. 20 years later and it's still loyal to its principles and the goal. To let people search on the internet with a blink of an eye. Now again, we're not a mad Devella channel about minimalism, but guess what? Minimalism also exists in computer science. As Wikipedia says, minimalism is the application of certain principles and philosophies in the design and use in hardware and software. In this sense, it means designing systems that use the least resources possible. And just like minimalism outside of the tech, this topic is still gonna be trendy in the following years. And something a lot of people want to get into. So what exactly changes when we apply minimalism in engineering? For example, the number of tools we use to deliver software from A to Z. Do you necessarily have to use TypeScript and compile it into JavaScript or you can get by without it? Of course, TypeScript will make your code less prone to bugs and edge cases if you use the full potential of it, but in some cases you can totally get by with JavaScript only and a set of well-written unit tests. Is using Terraform for managing your cloud infrastructure a must? Or would using the simple CLI of your cloud provider be enough for now? Often we want to jump ahead and set up all the processes even if we are not using them at the moment. This is a perfect example of less code is more code. The number of programming languages and frameworks we use. Frameworks in particular are considered a must nowadays. But believe me guys, it's still possible to write an enterprise level application without using any frameworks. With good talents and resources in place, you could even achieve more than what you would achieve with a framework and its limitations. The way we design databases, how caching is used, queuing and so on, are especially popular nowadays. Why would one, for example, cache all the assets on the frontend with the service worker for an ordinary website? As long as it's not a progressive web app with an app shell, which should be loading offline, means you don't have to cache your assets with a service worker. I will soon make videos on service workers and minimalism in tech as a topic, so make sure you subscribe. User research. Last but not least, as the number of people online has increased dramatically since 2020, there hasn't been a better time for us developers to pay more attention to users' needs. As long as you're not working on your pet project which doesn't have a public IP, you should make sure your app is easy to use and is intuitive, which means a proper user research, A-B testing and in-app customer service are becoming the core of the product's success. Basically, as programmers, we need to learn to avoid the shiny object syndrome there are many features that are fun to build, but we need to focus on what's important. What do our users want the most? The priority should be on users' needs rather than how fun it is to build a certain feature. So be aware of your own bias as a developer and don't let it influence you. For this, I will be reading books such as Inspired, The Product Book and Hooked. I will also leave the links in the description. And this is not an affiliate marketing, I'm actually planning to read them. One last thing I wanna say or rather ask you to leave a like and comment if you have anything to share. Like for example, what your plans for the next year are. What are you planning to learn? Or maybe share the list of the books you're planning to read. Have a nice rest of the day and goodbye.